Hi everyone. So by now um, you will have watched the topic video and hopefully you've got a good idea of where you're going and what kind of headings you want to use. So it would be a good idea while we're doing the rest of the pack before we doing to our, before we get to our actual research to actually do some background reading, start reading through the sources that they've provided for you. Um, if your teacher hasn't provided you with sources, uh, have a look at the link in the um, description below the video, you have access to sources that the PAD has actually given you. It's in the same document. Um, okay, if you're going to do an Afrikaans, I just want to tell you, if you're in an Afrikaans school, it doesn't automatically mean you have to do an Afrikaans. Um, you can do it in English as well. The only people I would urge to do it in English are the people who like get below 50-40% for English. Um, because getting research in Afrikaans is notoriously difficult. So you need to be very sure that you can get good sources in Afrikaans before you decide to do it in Afrikaans. So maybe just have a look at um, the possibility of getting enough good sources in Afrikaans before you decide to do it in Afrikaans. All right, so we're going to start off by making our folder structure. So you'll have to um, check with your teacher what the main folder needs to be if you need to create a main folder. In my school you don't have to because in our school we just use a specific login for the pet. So in our school we're just going to jump in with phase 1, phase 2, phase 3 in Afrikaans, Farsi and Farsi 2, Farsi 3. Um, and uh, just take note in your school you might have to make a main folder um, that's called your name or something like that. Okay, in phase 1 you're going to have a folder called research and in Afrikaans, Nafulshan, and then you're going to create a new Word document. So you'll go um, right-click New uh, Microsoft uh, Word document. This is Windows 11, so it might not look exactly the same. Um, it looks more like this, New Microsoft Word document, and then you're going to give it a meaningful name. Now, it's not going to be the same as the one for last year, um, but it'll be something about the specific topic that you chose. Okay, so I'm just going to leave it at new word document because I'm not going to show you what to name it. Okay. Um, in phase two, you're going to have four folders um, for your report that you're going to copy from phase one, questionnaire, the database and the spreadsheet, and then Afrikaans, there's your Afrikaans versions. Okay, and in phase three, you'll have two folders, one for the report, one for the website, for Schlag in Webwerf. Right, so please go ahead and do that now. Then you can go ahead and open your new Word document, whether you're going to do it in Afrikaans or English. Now the first thing we're going to do in this document is we're going to put in headings. Okay, this is on page 14 of the PAT guidelines. So we're going to put in these headings. They can each be on their own line um, in Afrikaans at the top over here. And under um, a task definition, under task definition, you're going to use these four bullets as headings as well. Under task beschrijving, gebruik jy dan hierdie vier bullets as opskrifte ook. Okay? When you're done, it's going to look something like this. And um, I want you to put in three additional headings at the bottom for the three uh, appendices or the three addendums. Um, for folder structure, sources, and your learner declaration of authenticity, bylog 1, bylog 2, and bylog 3. And you'll see I've also put a little star next to the first two questions under task definition. Um, just so that we remember, those are the two questions we're going to leave over in phase 3. Okay, you can do that if you want, or you don't have to. I'll remind you again. Okay, now if you're doing Afrikaans, just pay attention for a second. Um, we need to set the document's language to Afrikaans right from the start. So um, select all your content, Control A, go and click at the bottom where it says English South Africa, and change the language to Afrikaans. And you can actually set it as default since you're going to be working in Afrikaans. All right, now you shouldn't have that many problems with spell checking. And then um, I think it would maybe be good to do uh, an autocorrect for you so that everywhere you type, um, I don't know why I'm speaking English to you. I will say, what are you going to do? You have to put it automatically in the top of So the way you do this is you put it in the top of your head with a 
teen aan een ander woord, so dat hy dit actually met, dis, met die, die rechte, na die rechte angle te doen, ek het my nou afgesit dat hy nie um, daar ronding gee nie, dan gaan cut jy dit, ok, so cut dit, en dan gaan jy na um, file to, options, proofing, autocorrect, en dan kan jy sê, ooral waar jy net een en intik, wil jy dit replace met, een en en een streepiekie. Ok, dan sê jy, replace, ok, en dan gaan ooral gaan jy net nodig hee om een en in te tik op sy eier, en dan sal hy dit vir jou replace. So now, what we've done already, is you've already done your folder structure. So we now need to paste screenshots of that folder structure under addendum 1, and make it into a nice little group. So put some space over here and let's have a look again, just a reminder of how to do screenshots. So the best um, program to do screenshots with, in my opinion, is the snipping tool. So go to your start menu and search for snip. Okay. Now, um, snip uh, is also sometimes called snip and sketch uh, or snipping tool. Doesn't really matter which one you use, but use the snipping tool. You're going to use it in rectangular mode. The first folder you're going to snip is just all three of these. I don't quite like it when it still has a um, <laughs> like a blue mark on it, but that's completely up to you. So I quite like just clicking in it like that. Um, and then you can press new and then you'll see it grays out the screen for you like that. And then you can click and drag over it and make a nice little box. There you've got your box and now you can just go and paste it. You don't need to save it first. You can just go right click and paste. And just like I've shown you in the other example, I'll give you a show now. You don't have to worry about styles and everything like that now, but um, something like this is the kind of thing we're wanting. You don't have to do the fancy arrows and borders and whatnot if you don't want to, but we need to have a screenshot of what is contained in every single folder and it would be good to group them so that you don't struggle with them. So um, every picture you'll have to set a, a different wrapping on. Um, so just a reminder of how to do that. You'll have to right click and change that, not right click really. You can just click there and change the wrapping to square or tight. Then you can move them around quite easily. Um, and then you'll put the rest of the um, screenshots in and group them together. So the way one groups um, different objects is you hold your control in, you get that little plus on your cursor, and then you can add them all together, and you get option right click, and then you can group them. Um, and then they can all move together as one object. So please go ahead and do that. Don't worry about the styles or anything like that now. Um, we're gonna do all of that in the next video. Right, when you're done with that, just wanna show you where, we, where we're at at the moment. This is our assessment rubric, so I'm going to be marking off what we've done as we go along. So at the moment, all we've done at the bottom is we've got a single report that we've done. We've got all the headings that we need and we have an addendum with a diagram or a screenshot of the actual folder. So we're done with the first three marks of our pet.